today we're checking out another mini electric bike. This is the Mihogo Mini. As of the time of this video, it's still a campaign on Indiegogo with a bunch of early bird deals and perks. A link is in the description box if you're interested in checking that out. We'll get into more specs and details in a little bit. And of course, we're doing a full ride test. But first, we're gonna take a look at how the bike was packaged, get everything out and installed. This one comes in five colors, purple, blue, yellow, red, and gray, which is what I was sent. I believe I received one of the early test models, so I don't think this is what the box you may get will look like. But overall, I thought the bike was securely packed to prevent damage in shipping. All right, you get a carrying bag, and a detachable front child seat. A pretty nice seat for the main rider. Seems firm but cushy. And pulling the bike out, I found it to be fairly light. It's 42 pounds without the battery installed, so it can't be any more than 50 pounds with it, which is really, really light. The other 12 inch by 2.4 inch wide tire, and this little box is the last thing to pull out. We'll get into that in a second. All right, so you are gonna have just a little bit of assembly to do. It's not a whole lot. Now, I looked through the instructions manual. It's not the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through this. It's really, really simple. Um, so we're talking putting on the front tire and the front fender, the handlebars, the front headlight, we're gonna have to put that on, pedals, the seat, and that's it, guys. So not a whole lot at all. Okay, in that little box you get your instructions manual, how to connect the app to the display unit. You get a little bag of tools, the front headlight, pedals, the front axle, foot pegs, and here's the Mihogo branded charger. Okay, I am actually going to go ahead and put the handlebars on <laughs> because they are really in the way, so. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I feel like it's easier just to take everything off except for the spacers. So I took all the, nut, the nuts off and everything else off except for these spacers. Hopefully that's focusing. Okay, probably the easiest thing to do on this bike is to put the uh, bike seat in. Very simple, I'll just leave it there for now and then we'll adjust that later. And it has this nice clamp here, so just clamp it down there. And All right, next we're gonna go ahead and put the pedals on. So you can see they are labeled. We're going to install the right pedal and turn them clockwise, the left pedal counterclockwise. And the last thing we need to do is to install the front headlight. We're just gonna remove this bolt here and put the uh, light here. And you can see the connector here. We'll just need to connect that up to the power line there. And we should be good to go. Okay, so here's the power connector. There's actually arrows on each connector to kind of line those up. I don't know if you can see that, but there's an arrow on each. So it pretty much shows you how to line those up. All right, let's take a quick look at the display and control center of the bike. You can see there's three buttons here on the left. You've got the power button, plus and minus. Uh, the plus and minus buttons, that's how you're gonna increase and decrease the pedal assist. So you can see that here and uh, short pressing the power button here is gonna get you into the advanced settings. We're gonna come back to that. Long pressing the plus button is going to turn on the front and rear lights and turn them off again. You've got your speedometer here, battery level uh, indicator. You've got trip data and odometer. You can see I've put 15.5 miles on the bike so far. There's four icons up here. They're grayed out except for the Bluetooth uh, indicator, the indicator uh, to tell you if the lights are on, uh, if you're using navigation, and we'll talk more about that in a second. 
and if there are any errors. So if you get an error code for one reason or another. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the settings. So you can see you've got uh, three levels of brightness that you can set. Mine is set to the highest. I imagine you can save on some battery life by lowering that. You can switch between kilometers and miles per hour. You can also set how long it takes for the bike to shut off when it's idle. So a nice uh, battery saving feature. Wheel size, uh, I, I guess if you wanna change the size of the wheels, I don't know if you, you even could on this bike, but you can see it goes up to 22. There are 12 inch tires on this bike. So that's what I'm gonna leave that at. Steel number, I honestly have no clue what that is. So if anybody knows, let the rest of us know. Speed limit, so you can actually limit your speed on this bike. Not sure why you would do that, um, but mine is set at the highest, so we get the top speed zero start um, not really sure what this is for I, I tested out a couple of things but I, I just I, what I thought it was for it's not which I thought it meant that you could start with the throttle um, even in zero pedal assist because that's one thing I wanted to note is when you're in level zero the throttle will not engage nor will the pedal assist engage. It only starts engaging when you're in pedal assist one. So I thought that zero start um, was a way to change that, but it does not have any impact at all. All right, boost drive. So boost drive, this is where you can set whether the motor will assist you only when you pedal, only when you use the throttle, or both, which is how I have mine set. Now, even though the bike has five levels of pedal assist, it is one gear. So there, there won't be, you won't be doing any shifting or anything like that. It does have a twist throttle here on the right. Power it on so you can see it. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. And it's pretty, pretty bright. So I don't have any trouble seeing this. No clue what EABS set is, so we'll skip that. We're just gonna skip stuff that I don't know, you know, if I don't know what it is. <laughs> Start strength, so this is where you can set how much power the motor will give you when the assistance actually kicks in. So if you want it to be more gradual, um, you can set that number to be lower. Uh, I have mine set at five, um, and I actually find that it works the best. Now here's something cool you can do. You can set a password, and that will essentially lock the bike from use. So. If you do set a password, just make sure you remember it because the only way to reset that is by contacting uh, Mihogo. Also, if you do set a password, you can then set up Bluetooth proximity locking and unlocking. So if you're near the bike, it'll automatically unlock um, when you have your smartphone. So it'll automatically unlock, and when you're out of range, it'll lock the bike down. So that's a nice little feature. All right, let me show you the app now. It's called Bike Go, and this allows you to connect to the bike through Bluetooth, and then you can access the navigation feature on the bike's display here. Okay, so here we are in the Bike Go app. Um, that that photo there is not of the Mihogo Mini, of course, <laughs> um, but. We're gonna go ahead and connect here. So we're gonna hit connect and there we go. We are connected. Now there's a few things that I noticed uh, you're supposed to have uh, access to, uh, to do within the app that, that are grayed out. So see how the, the light icon there, you're supposed to be able to turn the lights on and off from the app. That's grayed out for me. Um, and it's also supposed to give you battery life here um, not seeing that. And also it's uh, supposed to give you trip and speed and average speed and max speed and all that, uh, but does not look like any of that is working. All right, so, uh, but you can use the navigation that actually does work. So if you pull that up, okay, so this allows you to set a destination and then you'll actually get turn by turn uh, directions navigation right from the display so I've just put something in there and we're just going to do a simulated navigation and as you can see there on the display it's giving you turn by turn uh, directions so that's super super cool super cool so of course one of the best things about a mini electric bike 
is the portability, right? Okay, this is an SUV, so it's a little bit larger, but you could totally fit this in the trunk of some larger uh, sedans, even in the back seat of most vehicles, large and small, all right? And, you know, you can transport it to the park or wherever you wanna go, and it's just so, so convenient. You don't need a bike rack or anything like that. So you can see, just fold the handlebars back up <laughs> and you're ready to ride. So the reverse, fold the handlebars down, put the kick stand up and load the sucker into your vehicle. And I personally love that about the mini electric bikes. All right, let's talk about the MiHogo Mini. Um, let's talk about a few things and then we're going to get this thing out on the road and do the ride test. So first things first, sizing. This bike accommodates riders that are four foot nine up to six foot four. And I am six foot two. It has a weight capacity of 440 pounds so a maximum load of 440 pounds so let me show you this uh, six foot two rider here and you can see what kind of clearance i have and let me show you the maximum height of both the seat which i think i already had it set at the maximum height so that's the max and then you can also adjust the handlebars that's the max, I think. Uh, hang on, nope, there's a line there. You don't wanna go any higher than there. So that's the max there. So in theory, this is for your six foot four rider right here, all right? So you can see what kind of leg clearance I have here. All right, and then let me show you what this would be for the shortest rider. So we'll put the seat all the way down and we'll put the handlebars all the way down so you can see this here all right all right now let's talk some specs and dimensions okay first things first you have a 350 watt motor in the rear here that produces 35 newton meters of torque we have a 48 volt 16 amp hour battery okay that has panasonic cells in it all right let's talk a little bit about the battery you do get two keys all right, and what you have to do to remove the battery from the bike is you have to put the key in and you see this little nodule here. You have to push in and turn. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Push in and turn it. And you can see how that nodule goes in and then you can pull it, pull it out. Now there's one problem, the seat post. You actually have to remove the seat post to pull the battery out of there, okay? One of the good things about this is you can still turn the bike on in this position, pull it out, and the bike will still power on, okay? This right here, this is um, where you plug in the charger, all right? So that gets covered up just like that. And over on the other side is where you actually plug in the bike. Uh, you do get a 48 volt, two amp um, charger, and it's supposed to charge the battery up in six hours. I will put up on the screen what, how long it actually takes, uh, if I remember to do that, <laughs> okay? Mihogo is saying that you will get 62 miles of range. So 62 miles, it's likely not gonna get us that, but we're gonna see exactly how much range we get out of the bike. Maximum speed is 21.9 miles per hour, which is really, really cool. And the bike weighs 42 pounds. That's actually without the battery. And I think the battery weighs about five to seven pounds. Okay, so the bike is not heavy, really. It's really not heavy at all. All right, the bike is 5.58 feet in length from bow to stern. And at its highest, it's going to be 4.1 feet. The bike has 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes, and I've already had a chance to test these out. And, and brake. <laughs> 12 inch, 2.4 inch wide tires with mag wheels. Uh, the front does have suspension 
It is not adjustable or anything like that, but at least you have something there. Nothing in the rear in terms of suspension. You can find this version, which is the Pro version for $449, and the standard version is $399. And the main differences between the Pro and standard models is the display. With the Pro, you get a 2.4 inch IPS uh, color screen. With the standard, you get a 1.5 inch digital display. Uh, this one has five pedal assist levels. The standard has three pedal assist levels. Uh, the headlight on the Pro is 25 watts and the uh, headlight on the standard is 22 watts. But I say for the additional, what is it, 50 bucks or so, go for the Pro. Go for the Pro. All right, now let's go ahead and get the MiHoGo Mini out on the road so we can check this thing out and have some fun. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Okay, right off the bat, we're gonna go ahead and do our speed test. We have our independent GPS speedometer just to keep the bike display speedometer honest. We'll also time this to see how fast it gets up to speed. Uh, we're gonna do throttle only for the first go. So let's throttle only. 21.9 is the advertised top speed for the MiHoGo Mini. We're up to 13. Looks like there is a slight lag on the GPS speedometer, but that is to be expected. They are pretty much in sync. 17 miles per hour. 18. Okay, 19 miles per hour. Okay, 20. Do we have 21? Do we have 21? Oh, we ran out of room. Okay, we did hit 20, but we ran out of space. So let's turn around and try this again. See if we can get up to 21 miles per hour. 12, 13, 14. We're up to 16 miles an hour now. 18, 19, there's 20. All right, we should be able to hit 21 here. We've got plenty of room, plenty of room. 21 miles per hour on the bike display. Haven't seen it on the GPS speedometer yet, but 21 holding steady on the bike speedometer. 21 on the GPS, independent GPS speedometer. So we did reach the 21, the advertised 21 miles per hour. All right. Okay, now we're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna do pedal assist only. We are in pedal assist five. And by the way, I am wearing my sunglasses and I can see the screen just fine. So no worries there. All right, let's push off and pedal assist only. Let's see how fast we can get up to 21 miles per hour. Now, first thing I'm noticing with the pedal authority, you do kind of lose it pretty fast. Uh, we're at 16 miles per hour and I am pretty much ghost pedaling right now. Let's see if I can push this. I have very little pedal authority here. We are up to 18 miles per hour though. 19. 19, there's 20. Uh, we've got a little bit of a turn there. I had to slow down. Let's see if we can keep going. Pedaling. Yeah. Very little pedal authority once this gets rolling, so. I'm not gonna even attempt that uh, anymore. <laughs> uh, just know that um, if you wanna reach 20 miles per hour, you're gonna wanna do it in either throttle only or throttle uh, with pedal assist, okay? And that's what we're gonna try right now, okay? In three, two, one, go. 
And let's see, in theory, we should get up to speed much faster. Okay. <laughs> I look like I'm on one of those little hamster wheels. Once you get up to about 13 or 14 miles per hour, it's there, your pedal authority is pretty much gone because there's no gears on this bike. Single gear, 19. 19 mile an hour, 20, and we're out of space again, so we'll have to turn around and do this. All right, three, two, one, go. We're pedaling and throttle. 13, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20 miles per hour. Twenty miles per hour. We're coming up on a turn. There's 21. So it seems like it was about the same amount of time. But point is, it is as advertised. The bike will reach the top speed of 21 miles per hour. There is one thing I forgot to mention, guys. The bike does actually have collapsible pedals. So you just push them in and fold them down just like that. Um, both pedals do it, of course. And that just adds to the uh, compact nature and portability of the bike. So that's a really nice feature. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test each pedal assist level. Right now we are in level zero. And in level zero, you cannot utilize the throttle okay there is also no pedal assist okay so let's just pedal the bike so we can see how easy or difficult it is to pedal this little bike and see what kind of speed we can get it's not really difficult to pedal we're up to seven miles an hour eight now this is a relatively flat road or path that I'm on right now. If I were going up even a slight incline, I think this would be uh, quite difficult. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test each pedal assist level to see what the top speed is in each level. Back down to one, and I'm gonna use the throttle to get rolling, and then I am pedaling only Let's see what the top speed is. Looks like eight miles an hour is the top speed in pedal assist one. Pedal assist two, a little more juice provided. Only up to nine. Pedal assist three, motor's giving me some more juice. Looks like 11. Very, very incremental. Pedal assist four. A little more power, 14, 15. So 15 miles an hour in pedal assist four. Now we're up to five. And then obviously five will get you the rest of the way up to 21, technically 21.9 miles per hour. Okay, now we're gonna do our brake test. Now I will say I did have to make some adjustments to the brakes. Um, I'm still not too keen on the front brakes here. Um, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'm pressing all the way to the bar on the front brakes here. So not the best on that side. So we're gonna pretty much rely on the rear brakes, which seem to be uh, pretty good. All right, so here we go. Great test. Get up to speed here. 13, 14, we're gonna stop at this tree and break. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, we've been riding for, let's see, we've ridden 4.7 miles according to the bike um, trip and 4.57 miles according to Strava. I've got Strava going because 
Um, when you power down the bike, it's going to reset the trip. And I didn't see any way to change that setting. So just know if you're trying to keep, you know, keep track of your, your trip and maybe you're stopping, maybe you stop it to get ice cream or something, I don't know, shut the bike down, it's going to reset the trip. Your odometer obviously will keep going and tallying up your accumulated uh, miles, um, but for the sake of this review, so we can get an idea of what range is, um, we're gonna rely uh, mainly on Strava. All right, and like I said, right now we're up to 4. 4. 4.69 miles. And in terms of battery life, looks like we still have 75% of the battery. Let's see if I can show you this. Still got about 75% there. So it's just the bar, not percentage. So we came across this hill when I was reviewing that other mini electric bike and it struggled to get up this hill. So I've got this little device that tells us what the, the actual incline is, um, the grade is. Looks like it's 16 degrees. So this is a 16 degree hill. We're going to try this uh, electric bike out and see um, how well it gets up this hill. Okay, so we are going to do our hill test now. Just coming around. Um, there is a groundskeeper here that's collecting flags. There's, uh, there's a bunch of soccer games going on, so I'm trying to wait him out. I don't know if we'll be able to, so let's just get on down here um, and see if this 350 watt motor can get up this 16 degree hill. All right. Going through the grass pretty good. Actually, not, not bad at all. I, I'm kind of surprised with these small tires. Um, I'm full throttle right now. We're going about six miles an hour. Let's see if I can pedal and get us some, some more speed. That's the challenge, is getting up the speed on this grass. Let's see. Okay, okay. Oh, almost, almost. Don't want to burn the battery. I'm sorry, burn the motor out, I should say. Uh, but nope, it wasn't able to do that on its own. Not with me uh, pedaling or throttling um, at the same time. Was not able to do it. So we'll see if we can find another hill similar to that, uh, but on uh, pavement where we can actually get a running start. And I think it might actually have a chance because it it didn't do terrible there. It almost reached the top, but uh, just just didn't have enough of a running start. Okay, we're over here. Um, in a location that has a little bit of a hill. So we're gonna see how the bike does on that hill and we'll be able to get a running start. And I'm doing throttle only right now. So you can see a little bit of an incline, 14 mile an hour, 12, 10, nine, eight, seven, down to five so that's about how far we can get just with throttle only okay we're going throttle and pedal pedal assist and throttle let's see if we can get all the way up the hill 10 miles an hour nine eight we're getting there nine eight hovering around eight and nine mile an hour yep we're able to get up there all right i'm going to turn around because i don't want anyone thinking i am trespassing this is actually a uh a historical site where people can come and visit and it's a kind of like a park so nobody is living there <laughs> okay so pretty decent power from the 350 watt motor when you pedal and use throttle you can get up a pretty 
pretty steep hill like that. And there's a little bit of a path back here or trail back here. We'll run back there for a second, but look here, we've got a little bit different terrain uh, that we can check out. So this is gravel. See how the bike handles this gravel and it's getting through like, like nothing, like it's nothing. No big deal. Let's see how it turns. So we've already tested grass. Now there's this sort of rough gravel and it is slipping a little bit, but not too bad. I don't feel like it's uh, not safe or steady. So not too bad handling that okay, even with these 12 inch tires. And now let's go back on this uh, path. Looks like wood chips here. So let's see, doing pretty well on this kind of terrain as well. Not bad. It's picking up speed really well. Oh, 10 mile an hour, 11. Not too bad. Not too bad. 350 watts. 35 newton meters of torque that's what uh that's what that'll get you or this is what that'll get you we're moving pretty good now 14 15 Ooh. <laughs> yeah i feel like i need to slow down a little bit watch your speed on this kind of uh terrain i think 10 to 12 miles an hour is uh pretty safe but I've been riding close to an hour today. Um, we've done 7.74 miles on the bike and looks like we are down to about half, half on the battery. So that would lead me to believe that we could probably get uh, 15 or so miles. The way I've been riding this particular bike is I've mostly used throttle, okay? I mostly use throttle because once you get up to, I'd say between 12 and 15 miles an hour, okay, it's struggling in, in that rough gravel back there. But once you get up to about 12 to 15 miles an hour, you don't have much pedal authority. And the ride comfort is not bad. The only thing that I would have preferred would have been uh, the pedals to be maybe, um, a little bit closer to the front that would have been a, a little bit better of a riding position for me and i think for smaller riders it, it's you know it's a comfortable ride i've been riding like i said for an hour today i could probably ride for another hour we're going 25 miles an hour right now downhill 26 and i'm gonna apply those brakes <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's fun <laughs> And at some point, we'll need to turn the headlight on. We've got a headlight and a tail light, and the tail light is also a brake light. So when you apply the brakes, uh, they do light up. So that's, that's a really, really nice feature to have for safety. All right, I'm also gonna do a night ride so you can see how bright the front and rear lights are. Um, which is important for, you know, uh, motorists to see you at night and also so you can see where the heck you're going. I find the front light to be really good. Rear light, uh, both are bright enough, I thought. So that's uh, really nice features. Okay, the battery indicator has turned red. So I am going to start making my way back because I do not want to pedal this bike back i do not want to do that so so yeah you can you should be able to see that it does light up the path pretty well pretty well all throttle now still getting 19 miles an hour and the battery indicator is flashing now okay so you should be able to see that the uh, 
the battery level indicator is flashing, but I still have power. The front light is lighting up. I still have throttle. The display is still, uh, you know, pretty bright. And based on where we were at half battery, I think we were at about seven and a half miles. I figured we would get a total of 15 miles out of the battery. And that's about where we are. We're at 14.8. So yeah, about 15 miles. I'll give it 15 miles here. Um, <laughs> definitely not what was advertised, but you have to keep in mind, you know, the size and weight of the rider that all plays a part in range and even the, uh, the zippiness of the bike. All right, I think I'm really pushing it now. I'm gonna wrap this thing up and uh, call it a day. Yep, I wanted to reach the 15 miles and we did, so I think I'll call it a day. Mm -hmm.